Hello friends, this is a practical number 7. So in this practical, we need to perform an ADA.NET application which will insert a record into a database as well as a delete a record from the database using dynamic link libraries as well as a front-end application that is ASP.NET. Now, this practical is divided into three points that is creating a database with the employee table. Second phase will be creating a project for employee DLL which will be your dynamic link library. What is a dynamic link library? Dynamic link library is a separate project or an application which will include a functions as well as a data which can be called on a different application. Third phase will be create ASP.NET application for inserting or deleting a record. So these three activities we need to perform in a single practical. So I guess all of you have executed your practical number six where we have already created an employee table in the database MCADB. So let's create a procedure for inserting an employee as well as a delete procedure for deleting an employee. So I'm just directly starting with creating the procedure. So just right click, create a new procedure. Delete this template. So I'm writing a procedure, create procedure SP insert employee provide the parameters let's say in employee id second parameter is employee name should be envir care So let's take only two fields. And here you can write insert query, insert into employee values at the rate employee ID and at the rate employee name. So let's execute this procedure procedure is com completed successfully. Now similarly we will create a procedure for delete employee. Now delete employee will require only one parameter because we are going to delete a specific employee with its employee id. So the query will be now delete from employee where employee id equals to at the rate employee id so here whichever employee id will be there that employee id will be passed as a parameter and can be assigned to a specific column value in the delete query let's execute this so I think employee ID okay it's there so delete from whatever employee ID because we at the rate employee ID. let's execute it again so it's completed so this is my delete procedure so let's refresh this database or a procedure so we'll find my insert employee and delete employee so we have done with the first phase that is we have done with the creating some procedures and we have one table employee with two columns now let's come back to your dotnet application where we have to create a dynamic link library like i said a dynamic link library consists of some functions and uh, some variables that can be used 
in the different that can be used or you can say that can be called in the different applications or different modules. So I need to create a new project. So now I'm creating a first project in the same application as uh, a class library. So I'm just creating a class library called as employee dll <clears throat> so this will be my class library where i can write all the functionalities or you can say the business functions that will connect to the database So I'll just rename this particular class with the name employee.cs. So here I can use system dot data we need to import the namespaces so in the last session or you can inspect technical number six have them i have uh, i've just given you the information about the namespaces these are not, they are nothing but they are the logical grouping of your classes so i'll write some declare some variables connection variable on equals to null command for executing the SQL commands or a stored procedure. Now I'll write a business logic or business functions. Public, let's write down a string variable. Insert employee. This is my business logic or function name. AMP. Let's pass the parameters. So we need to compulsory return something here. Now, before returning, I'll just write a try catch block where I can have extra catch block to handle the exception. Now I'll declare one variable string return value equals to null, let's say, or I'll just declare it as some variable, let's say error. Now here I can return value equals to the x dot message now we'll just have to just write one more function called as get connection which will be a common function for establishing a connection so here public void get connection so i'm instantiating common object connection i need to pass a connection string over here So like in last lecture or last practical, I have shown you how to take that connection string. You select this database string, just right click properties, and you will find this connection string. So paste it over here and just provide one more slash. So your connection is ready. Now the first step is establish a connection in the function. 
then instantiate a command object command pass here we are using procedures so provide the procedure name insert i think employ the name that we are given for the procedure and the connection path next step is cmd dot command type is equals to command type dot as we are using procedure so this statement will identify the previous statement that you have written is a stored procedure or it means it is executing a stored procedure next step is pass the parameters parameters dot add what are the parameters that it provided there and state attack is scale to be type dot and you can give dot value is equals to EMP ID. These values are going to be passed from these parameter values and this will be assigned it to a procedures parameter. Similarly for the second parameter copy this state. So here this will be by name. Now the next step is we have passed the parameters. Next step is we need to open the connection, execute the query, and close the connection and assign some return value as a success message. you need to return this value as a return statement oh, sorry it's a return statement so here instead of this you can use return val equals to if any exception comes this will return an exception so this is over just build this DLL right click and build so build is successful now let's continue with an ASP.NET application where we need to use this employee DLL as a class library or a separate namespace now here in the same solution we are going to add a new project so add a new project so we are going to add a project a normal ace project web application so i'll just give the name as practical So this will be my normal application. So in this practical number seven, we need to create a simple web form with two fields employee id and employee name and one submit button as well as we can take one more control a label control for displaying the message now see in this solution we have multiple projects one project is of dll and second project is of asp.net application so in this asp.net application i'm just adding one new web form giving the name let's say employee home oh. 
So this is my form. Here I'll design one employee form. So here let's take TR and multiple TDs we require. Let's give this as employee ID and we'll take one text box control here. So we can take it from toolbox. So this is my text box. I'm taking need to take a standard control so this will be here in standard standard so just change the name so txt name the id similarly let's give this name as mp name here we require a text box. This will be my TXT. So basically, we are designing a sample form with two fields, and this TD will be only for displaying the summit button. And uh, we'll do one more thing. I'll take one more TR so that I can display some messages on this particular label. So this label is for just displaying the error messages or if any message that comes from that particular functionality. Initially, I'll keep it blank and change its full color to red so that will be from different color. So, messages that are going to display in red color. So, just format this particular section. So, your form is ready. Now, the important thing is remain here. In practical number seven, I need to add this employee DLL. So just right click for this application, add it, add reference. Now browse it, or in the same solution you'll find this reference. Click OK. So you'll see the reference gets added in your application now. So in this particular reference or in case employee DLL, we have a class called as an employee and in that class we have a function for insert employee details. So in this particular form, if you see the design view of this particular form, So this is my simple form and I'll just change the button text to submit. Now let's merge these two cells also. So I need to provide TD call span equals to 2 and alignment 
goes to center. So you see the design is now changed. Now just double click on submit button. Now you will come to the employee home.hpx.cs file. So in this CS file, I need to just import that my created DLL. Now all the classes in this employee DLL are now accessible in this particular applications. Now let's see. You got this employee. I'm creating its object new employer. Once you have created the object of this employer, it means you can access the functions of this employee class. Now, for the submit button, I need to call the function of an object employee. Now, the written type of the method that I've written is insert employee's written type of string. So, lbn message dot text equals to obj dot insert. So you'll see insert employees coming from the DLL. Now pass the parameters. Now first parameter should be an integer parameter. So I need to write convert dot to int32 will convert the text content to a integer. Second parameter will be a normal text. So txt num dot text. So there were two parameters. One was integer and second one was string. And it this particular function is returning string. So whatever the string is coming, it will be assigned to label. So only thing is execute this application. Now we have this employee home dot aspx green trouser. So your form is executing in the browser. So you see your page. Now let's insert some values. My employee ID, let's say 10019. And pass the parameter, let's say we run Sure. Let's submit. So here it's giving you a message failed to convert parameter value from string to integer. So here, let's change the value to So I think we have not done a proper conversion over here So here, employed is a numeric value uh, Let's see here what we have passed in the procedure Let's see the employee.cs in DLL. So this is my procedure name is SP insert employee. So let's check whether the employee name is same or not. Insert employee SP underscore insert employee is correct. Okay, this was the incorrect signal. So here I need to pass paracare. 
Now again build that DLL. So as your DLL is in the same solution, it will be automatically refreshed. Or if you still find it like you're not sure whether your DLL gets updated, you should just select your application again. and go to add and references just okay now let's execute the application again Passing the value 109 submitted. Yes, so your data has been saved into the database. Let's see whether it is saved or not. So select star from employee and just execute this. Yes, so you see this record is inserted. Thank you. Now, as you know, how we have inserted the record into the database using DLL and this particular function. We can also have one more function inside my DLL for a deleting an employee. So I'm just referring this and writing my own function for delete employee but only I need to pass a single parameter I can delete it by its employee ID and change its name to delete employee this is my procedure name that I've already created in the database no need to pass the another parameter and just return here successfully deleted so this is my delete function in my dll so this now <clears throat> in my practical 7 i can add one more function or add i can add one more web form for Employee delete. So this form will consist of only one text box with one delete button. So I'm just taking a table that I've designed for the previous application. and no need to take this second employee name I need to have this message of course this is required and also I think I have deleted submit button also so, yes. so this submit button is required I will change its text to delete Just see the design view of this page. So we'll have this thing. Double click it. Now, like I said, we need to use the reference of that. Before that, I think we haven't built that DLL. So just build this DLL first. Just come to the Ace Front application again. So I'm using Employer DLL. Just check whether the reference is coming or not. Yes, it's coming. Giving the name as the OBJ equals to new employee, and here again on the LB message dot text 
equals to obj dot you see the skillet employee is coming now pass the parameter as an integer value so I need to convert dot to 32 this text employee to integer so let's execute my delete employee employee delete page So let's delete the same record that we have inserted previously. So delete. So it is giving it is little successful. Let's check it in the database. You see this record is present. Let's execute this. So I'll find that record has been deleted. Let's delete some more record. 102 will be delete. Click on this. Again, the deleted message is here. Same. So, if you this one, it is deleted. So, that is how we can delete the record also.